Hello and thanks for joining me. If you watched my last video, number 105, I was down at the coast on a blustery day and I said if enough of you were interested, I'd show you how I blend dozens of exposures to create a final piece. So thank you ever so much for all your comments. Two things I'll say before we get on with this tutorial. One is this is very much just a fast summary. There's no way I could show you the entire process in real time. It would be the longest video in the history of YouTube. Um, secondly, um, when you're looking at these images, please don't judge me. This is by no means the sort of thing that would normally see the light of day, to be honest with you. Um, I'm doing it very much as an exercise. Uh, and I thought, well, I'll put something out rather than nothing. But these are certainly not images that I would normally spend a couple of hours processing as a rule. OK, so with all of that said, pull up a chair. Let me show you how it's done. So we're in Lightroom here. And the very first thing to do is to go through all of your thumbnails and get rid of the ones that are no use to you. You'll notice with these, I've got them star rated. That's nothing to do with the quality of them. That's entirely to do with what part of the final composition they might make. At this point in time, I'm just going through, sifting through everything and giving them a star rating based on the bits that I might use. So, for example, this one's got a two star rating because there's a wave breaking on the leading edge of the rock. As I scroll through this sequence, they all might be quite useful to me in the final composition. So I flag those all up with two stars. Another part of the composition, this one, for example, shows the wave running off here and then also another piece of it breaking there. You'll also notice it's creating this quite nice S curve and I might be able to use that in my final composition as well. So I flag this up as three stars and as I go through that sequence, you'll see, yeah, those, those are all ones that might well work together. Now it's perfectly feasible that I might use more than two elements in my final composition. So for example, here's a four star one. And this again, there's a nice curve here. There's some waves running off. Might I use that? Yeah, it's possible, but probably not because this leading wave is obscuring too much of the rock. And that's something that I mentioned in my last video, which, by the way, if you haven't watched, it's probably worth having a look at that because this will make a lot more sense to you. Now, of course, if you end up with more than six elements, in other words, no stars through to five stars, um, you can then get into color coding uh, and flagging and there comes a point when you probably wouldn't need many more than that. But as an example, if I scroll down here to these ones that are highlighted in red, this composition comprised of about six elements in the final image. Having decided which ones we're going to work with, I'm going to do a basic edit on the first one. Now, as you'll see, I use a preset for the basic edit on all of my images because it's based on the sensor of my camera. And obviously, I'll change things later on in the edit. But as a starting point, I just apply a preset across the board. And I do that to all of the exposures in any photo shoot. So having done a basic edit and synchronized it across all of my exposures, I'm then ready to take each batch into Photoshop uh, and start blending them together. So I'll start by taking these two star ones uh, and I'll whiz those over to Photoshop by right clicking, edit in, open as layers in Photoshop. So here we are with five layers in Photoshop. So the first stage in the process is to align the layers. We select the layers and we just go edit, auto align layers. And at this point, we're not worried about any borders from misalignment. They'll get dealt with much later. The next thing to do, really simple, right click with all the layers selected and go to convert to smart object. Now, the great thing about smart object is they allow you to handle layers in creative ways and also to apply filters non-destructively. It's a whole subject in itself, but I can do a video about that if you're interested. So leave a comment. So we've now created a smart object and what we can see on screen is still the top layer in that smart object. But if we go to layer, smart objects, stack mode and mean, what that's going to do is to average out all of those layers together and give us a top image, which is that average. And there we have it. It's sort of a pseudo long exposure. 
In this instance, we've blended five exposures together, which are about a third of a second apart. And so instead of it all being streaked, we've now got this wispy ethereal look, which I quite like. So I bring it back into Lightroom and I color code it so that I can find it later in amongst all the other thumbnails. Now I'll do exactly the same thing for the three star ones, for example. In this instance, I've only got four frames to bring together. So having done exactly the same process, I then get a composite of those images, which looks like this. And as you can see, this one has the sea running off and this little wave hitting over here. And the sea running off was what I specifically mentioned when I was down on the coast. I find that aspect of waves on rock slightly more appealing. Now there's one last thing to consider particularly if you're blending lots of frames together. And that's that the sky can also get softened by this process. But I really want to retain the detail because there was lots of drama in the clouds. So I'm going to take this image to use as my sky because it's got plenty of dark clouds along the top here. So I'm going to select this image, this image and this one for my sky. And I'm going to take those across into Photoshop as layers to do a final blend. So the first thing we have to do in Photoshop is to align these layers, because as you can imagine, the composites could be taken quite a few minutes apart and we need to make sure that everything lines up properly for our final blend. So our top layer here is our sky layer. We're going to put a mask on that, command I to invert it. So we're hiding the entire mask and all we want then is a soft white brush to brush in our sky which hasn't lost any definition because that's a single exposure not blended at all and also make sure those mountains are nice and sharp okay happy with that now the next layer underneath that as you can see is our blend layer for our leading edge here and what we're going to do with that is apply a mask but this time we're going to use a black brush to mask out the bits of this middle layer to reveal the bits underneath. And the bits we want to reveal underneath, if you recall, is that runoff from the rock there like that. And the little splashy wave over here on the right hand side. Now, as I mentioned at the outset, this is a summary. I'm doing it really, really quickly because this could take hours otherwise. But you get the idea. What we're doing is we're creating a final composite from other pre-blended composites so that our composition is exactly as we want it based on various waves that hit the rock at various times. What I would then do is take it back into Lightroom and do my final edit. This is the final image. As you can see, quite a bit different from what we were just working with. The reason for that is I've cropped in really tight. I felt that the sea in the foreground was adding nothing into the composition. And also the rocks over to the right hand side were pretty distracting. And I wanted to emphasize the water on this particular bit of rock. Now, I did have a comment on the previous video from a chap called Alan Gold. Alan wrote in and said, oh, you're having a bit of a heavy relationship with the vignette slider or something to that effect. Now, Alan's absolutely right insofar as it does look that way. Um, but actually what I'm doing is I've been working with a method of processing that I'm quite enjoying. What I do is I darken an image down by as much as two or even two and a half stops across the board. And then I bring back bits of the image that I'm interested in emphasizing. And so that means that certain areas of certain images can be very, very dark. Um, and I just like it. And it's just a personal style thing. So in this instance, with this particular image, yes, the sea is now very dark. The sky is very dark and this rock down this side is very dark. But I've picked out light areas in the rock. I've put a light radial filter on the splashy bit. And with that nice S curve running along the bottom, that really is why it does look like I've just bashed the vignette slider down by about 25%. Anyway, that's how I make my final artwork 
from hundreds of exposures. Um, I don't have a name for the technique. I suppose you could call it composition blending, perhaps, I don't know. I certainly didn't invent it. Um, I'm sure it's been done by many a better photographer than I am. But I hope you found it interesting. So thank you ever so much for watching. And if you did find it interesting, Perhaps you might know somebody else who will too, so maybe hit the share button below. And if you haven't done it yet, why not subscribe now and join me next time. Cheers.